Well, howdy folks. Welcome back to the channel. We got ourselves a beautiful smoky day here in Fairbanks. We got wildfires all around us and uh, it is super smoky uh, down in town, but out here in the boonies, it's somewhat clear. It doesn't, uh, I mean, it's better out here is what I'm trying to say, but uh, all that shenanigans aside, let's have a look at what we're working on today. It's about time I got around to uh, seeing just how bad the engine is in my forklift here. But it's not just any old forklift. This here is a World War II, I think it's about a 1942 or thereabouts, Chevrolet G506, one and a half ton, four wheel drive truck that was converted into a forklift. Now this one actually has a really short wheelbase and I can't, I, I don't know if it was shortened. I don't know if this was shortened after the war or if it was actually built short like this um, for the war effort, if it was something special, but um, this particular truck would have been a just one and a half ton. It could have been a flatbed. It could have been a dump bed. Um, they had like service beds for these and they had like the bomb loader were just some of the things that these trucks could have been during the war effort. And obviously this one has seen has seen a little bit different of a life after the war because it has this whole contraption added on to it. And uh, personally, I'm really excited to use this. Obviously, we have a forklift mast. All the hydraulic cylinders and everything still present on this thing, which is amazing. I am super excited if I ever get the chance to actually use this thing. But, of course, the engine's locked up, as uh, as luck would have it. So, the story is, um, it was locked up when the previous owner got it. He, obviously, he didn't really care. He left the hood off of it all winter, so I got some more water in it. Not like that really hurt anything at all. Um, I did come up, I was walking back and forth here because jeep acres is just over there i was walking up to the jeeps and uh happened to pull the drain plug out of the oil pan and the only thing in it was water which means somebody prior to the previous owner was trying to revive this thing uh to some degree um you can see one of the spark plugs was out the rest of them are only like hand tight in there and uh so i think they put the old marvel mystery oil or atf or whatever i think they schwacked all the cylinders with some good stuff and they drained the oil out of this thing, and I think they were trying to get it to spin over, and I don't think they had any luck. So what we're going to do today is I'm just going to go I'm just gonna go for it. We're going to pull the cylinder head off, get right in. We'll, uh, we'll have a real look at it and see how bad the cylinders really are. So first things first, I mean, I'm going to pop the hood off of here. The valve cover is held on by two nuts, and then I'm going to get the carburetor off of there. That carburetor is something I'm going to want to keep in pretty good shape because uh, those, are, uh, those aren't very common these days, so... That's going to be the order of operations right now. And I mean, we'll just dive right in and see what's up with this thing. Alrighty. What I didn't mention already, this thing does have a GMC engine in it, given the uh, GMC on the valve cover. The GMC down there on the head, the GMC on the uh, intake manifold. So this is not the original Chevy engine. This should have had a uh, Chevy 235 in it, I believe. And uh, this should be a GMC 270. They'll bolt up together. There's some differences with the 270 and the engine mount and stuff. So if I, depending on what I find to replace this, if I do end up replacing this, you know, things will be different. But uh, that's problems for down the road. But this is a GMC engine, not the original World War II engine. But what we got going on here, I just got the valve cover loose. I haven't looked yet. Let's, uh, we'll just dive in together, huh? That's not too bad, actually. Wow. Given that it was, uh, given that it was seized and, um, whoever had it the first, so there were two folks that I sort of know, well, one guy that I sort of know, one guy that I know, and, uh, the first guy had this thing, and, uh, he only had it for, like, a week, I think, and then the second guy got it, and then the second guy had it all winter, and, uh, neither one of them really did anything with it. Is it bent? This push rod might be bent, so that's cool, but, uh... Yeah, it looks pretty decent under here. Let's just see. Okay, those are, that's free. That's free. That's stuck. That seems sticky. That's stuck. That's stuck. That's stuck. That's free. That's stuck. That's for stuck, rather. And that one's sort of stuck. So valves are sort of stuck. No doubt there's rust in the cylinders. Um, I'll just keep going here, obviously. Uh, temp gauge, I still got to pull the carbon and whatnot, but this is actually pretty uplifting how clean this is under here. Like, 
this could be miles worse. I think we uh, we might be able to save this thing. Alrighty, I got the rocker arms off and all the push rods out, and I was just sitting here after I uh, pulled the carb. Of course, she's got uh, she got water down the carb. That's uh, you know to be expected, really, in this situation. But the thing I did just realize is um, in between the valves here. Yep. So somebody left water in this thing and she is cracked right down, right down the middle of the valves. So I uh, reckon later on here, I'll do some digging and see what, uh, what I can't do. I think I have a 235 Chevy cylinder head. So I almost wonder if that wouldn't bolt on to this 270. Like I said, I don't know yet. I need to do my research here, obviously. Um, but, uh, I gotta do some digging on that. I reckon we'll, uh, we'll get down to the cylinders. We'll just see how bad it is before I, uh, before I make any final decisions. Obviously, we're just pulling this thing apart right now and, uh, sort of figuring out what's needed here. So, I'm gonna keep getting at it here. It's going pretty quick. I gotta pull the, uh, tappet cover off that side. And then, uh, head bolts should be the last thing honestly we're we're right there so cruising light right along here well folks i just got the last of the head bolts out we got uh all the vacuum lines off this thing let me hop up here so well i believe this was an oil feed line that went into the cylinder head there and then there was the vacuum line that went all the way around from the carburetor so those are all disconnected i got the last of the head bolts out and this thing actually uh it lifted itself while I was doing the uh, head bolts, so it's not like some cylinder heads, you know, where you got to get a pry bar and pop them off. So I am ready to lift this thing off. I don't have my tripod with me. It's down at the shop, and I don't feel like making the trip down there to get it. So I'm going to try and prop the old phone up somewhere and get you guys a good gander at this thing as I lift it off. You guys can get the uh, the first look at those cylinders. All righty, fingers crossed that the old phone there stays put. Let's see if we can lift this cylinder head up. I'm going to take it over to this fender here, which back in the day was the driver's side fender. <clears throat> oh, hold on. We got one more line left. It is a 7 16th. Lucky guess. Wait. Well, we'll pull it anyways. It's not hooked up to anything, so it's just a vacuum leak. But we'll go ahead and pull it so that hard line isn't in the way. <clears throat> there we go. All right, now we're ready. That coolant that's spilling out is not really coolant. It looks a lot more like water. Hey, that's not too shabby, actually. We'll get you guys in here for a closer look. Alrighty, we got number one here. It's looking pretty decent. Quite a bit of ring ridge there, though. Number two's, number two's a little worse for the wear in terms of rust. Three is all right. Four is half decent. Five, I can see some red in there. So yeah, they hit it with some Marvel Mystery Oil or some ATF. And then uh, six got the old water treatment. Oh, and that's a shame because that one's pretty decent aside from the water. We might be able to save this thing. Look at that absolute mess. We might be able to save this thing. Boy, that is a serious ring ridge though. Well, if we can make it run as it is, that would be pretty mint. Sure would beat having to uh, having to deal with uh, other options, such as pulling this and finding another engine. I wonder if it's been overboard in its life. I don't know why it says three, four, two, two, five. I'm not 100% sure what that's all about, if this thing's been rebuilt or not. Whack. Well, I'm going to get a... I'm going to get a paper towel in here and we'll try and clean this cylinder out a lot better. In fact, we'll try and clean up all the cylinders a little bit. And I'll go ahead and hit all these cylinders with some good stuff. 
it's gonna take a little bit of wire wheeling in here, especially number five here, I think is gonna be the worst one. Five and two are the bad ones. And that should be all it takes to pop this thing free. I'm actually pretty impressed with how how actually pretty decent this thing is. No kidding. Oh look, it had a block heater too. Had a winterized forklift. That's pretty funny. Dang. Oh yeah, the head's cracked. That's fun. I kind of forgot about that for a second. Well, we'll do what we can. Clean this up. I'm going to hit it with some stuff. And then uh, I'm going to have to mull over what we're going to do about that cylinder head. Well, I gave her a just a little closer inspection. I got all the water out of these. Yeah, five and two are gonna be our problems. But uh, like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and get some oil. Number six here is not the best looking cylinder in the world, but I think it'll try and do something if given the chance. So we're gonna send it. Um, yeah, I'm gonna find some oil, shellac this thing up. I totally threw that cylinder head down and was thinking a second ago that I might have bent a valve if I accidentally set it on a valve. I don't think I did, but had I, that would have been an issue. And then I was like, oh wait, that cylinder head's cracked. Oh, alrighty. I just hit all the lifters and all the cylinders with some WD-40. Now we just got some good old ATF. And uh, we'll just dump that on the ground, apparently. Try and get a little bit on these two that are up. Good thing about this thing being at an angle is it all goes back into the rear cylinders. Try and give the ones that need it a little more ATF. <coughs> oh, you're going to want to kick that bolt onto the ground. Great. I'll have to find that now. Anyhow, we got uh, some ATF in the cylinders. Everything's pretty well soaked. Obviously, I need to come back here in about a week or so and uh, clean all this up again. I need to wire wheel everything. Um, the cylinder walls and everything. Usually you don't want to take a wire wheel to cylinder walls, but when they're as bad as two and five here um, You don't really have much of a choice, but uh, yeah We're gonna go ahead and clean this thing all up here in the future But it's great that I know what I need now and uh, I'm pretty sure the only thing that I need for sure is a cylinder head uh, Unfortunately, not even the intake or exhaust manifold just the cylinder head, which is good to know so I can see if uh, I can see if a Chevy 235 cylinder head will work. If it will, I'm in luck. If it won't, I'm out of luck. If anybody knows if a 235 cylinder head would work, go ahead and comment it below because that would certainly help me out and save me from having to do some research, which obviously I would just despise having to do research. But uh, yeah, good to know. We know what we have here. I'm surprised it's actually this nice uh, given that this thing kind of got passed over by a couple of folks before coming to me. So we know that we don't really need a whole lot for this thing. I can't wait to hear this thing rip around the yard and uh, can't wait for it to be lifting heavy things. So let me get down. This thing is surprisingly tall actually, which is always fun. So there we go. The old forklift engine. We know how bad it is now. We know what we need to do. We know how to plan and we know what to uh, we know what to expect in the future. Now I'm going to go ahead and get all my junk cleaned up. And uh, that was a pretty fun little adventure for this afternoon. That only took about an hour and a half to get all that off, which is great. I love it when things go quick and easy. I didn't even break any head bolts. The last time I touched a stove bolt Chevy, I did indeed break a head bolt. So good stuff. Well, folks, We'll catch you guys on the next one. Hope you guys enjoyed this adventure with the forklift. I'm dying to do stuff with the forklift. I unfortunately just don't have the time for it right now. This thing isn't exactly crucial, but it's just a ton of fun. This thing is so cool. But with all that said, anyhow, thank you guys for watching. We'll catch you guys on the next one.